All right, throughout this season, we've picked up some very heavy rainfall, especially along the central coast in California. We've had the big atmospheric rivers that's led to flooding, but it's also led to mudslides and debris flows. And especially along the Big Sur area with Highway 1, it's almost something you hear about every single season. When you get heavy rainfall, the cliff along Highway 1 in the Big Sur area just turns into a mudslide and then the highway is shut down for a long period of time. So I thought it'd be interesting just to dive into the science to figure out where we get or why mudslides happen and what what makes them more likely and maybe even how would you know when one is coming. So there's a few big factors. One of them you can actually already see on this drawing and that's our steep slope that you see right there. So that is factor number one. And the reason that's important, pretty intuitive. If your ground is flat, and we'll add this aspect on later, I'll explain this, but let's say your soils become saturated, so your soil is now acting like a liquid. If it's flat, it's not really going to flow anywhere. Whereas the steeper that slope becomes, the more gravity is working against you, and when that soil starts to behave like a liquid, it just flows down. So I just mentioned maybe the other two big factors here. One of them is gravity, and that's tied into what we were saying about the steep slope, whereas the steeper the slope, the more gravity is going to be working against you when that slope fills up with rainwater and it becomes heavier. Now, I just touched on the third aspect there, heavy rain, and that might be the biggest factor of them all. And it's actually important what kind of rain you're getting. So with some of the landslides that we've had this season, or mudslides, whatever you want to call them, there are subtle differences, but they're all pretty similar. They happen because we picked up a large amount of rain over a very short period of time. I believe in one of those storms, we got 10 inches of rain in about eight hours. It, I think we might've even broke some records. Now what happens there is it saturates the soils and it basically just allows that soil to act like a liquid. The best way I can think of this is if you have two bowls of oatmeal here. Let's draw our little oatmeal in. So in bowl number one, we made it, it was actually like the oatmeal I made this morning. I didn't use enough water and it was basically just solid and firm. And I actually had to add more water because it was kind of just a block of oats. It was not, not good. So that one's going to be solid. Now let's say tomorrow I overcompensate and I add too much water to my oatmeal. Then it's going to behave like a liquid. That's the exact thing that happens when you pick up too much rain too quickly. It, all that rainfall soaks into your soils. It's not able to absorb anymore. And then it turns into runny oatmeal and you get a mudslide. Now, finally, let's add on the last little aspect that we're going to be talking about, and that is wildfires. Now, this one isn't as intuitive as the others, but I'll just break this one down to hopefully make this make more sense. All right, so the first thing that we're going to have to do is think about what happens when the rainfall comes in right here. So we're picking up large amount of rain and our little house is on the bottom of this hillside. Now think where this rainfall is going. Well, most of it is that, well, there's two places it can go. It can either soak into the soils or it can turn into runoff. Now at first, you're going to get more of a larger percentage of that rainfall soaking into the soils. So let's say, now this isn't going to be a perfect drawing, but I'm illustrating a point. So at first, let's say this hillside can hold 100% of the water that it can hold. At first, it's soaked up enough water that it's maybe holding 20%. And then it soaks up some more water. Now it's at like 40%, and then 50, and then 60, and then all the way up to 100. So we'll put in 60 and 80 just to complete our drawing there. So the hillside completely fills with water, and now it's become saturated. Now at that point, since we have no vegetation holding this hillside in place, that's where, let's see if I can draw this well, that's where the mudslide comes in and 
this house could be in some serious danger. Let's just see if I can complete this little drawing. This might ruin it. Yeah, so there's our mudslide. House is in danger because the soils were saturated and there's no plants holding it in place. So now let's look at a different situation and let's draw some vegetation in here. Oh, cancel. There we go, still getting used to this drawing software. All right, and yeah, we're good. <laughs> so let's draw some trees in here. Let's actually make these trees look good. And we'll need some branches on it. We'll make them big trees because it's going to help illustrate the point that I'm making about the root systems. So there's our trees. Now, everybody, as everybody knows, trees don't just start on the surface. They have an intricate root system like this. Now this root system is going to be holding this hillside in place. So even if you get a massive amount of rainfall, and even if your soils become saturated and they want to act like wet oatmeal, they're not, it's not going to be as likely that that happens because of this intricate root system holding the soils in place. Now let's say a wildfire comes through this area and it burns out these trees. Now what is going to happen in this aspect or in this situation is all of a sudden your trees are gone, your root system is gone, and then if you have another big rainstorm, All right, there we go. Then if you get another big rainstorm, what's going to happen? You'd no longer have the root structure holding your hillside in place and you get another big mudslide. So hopefully these videos become a little bit faster as I get better at this tool and at drawing, but that should illustrate the point basically mudslides become more likely the steeper a slope is the more rainfall you're getting the shorter amount of time that that rainfall is falling because the soils become saturated they become heavier and they lose cohesion and basically act like a liquid or a wet oatmeal in our description and the reason they become more likely after a wildfire is normally the root structures of plants hold that hillside in place and after a wildfire burns out those plants you lose that structure and then mudslides become more likely. So hopefully this video was helpful and thanks for watching.